I will show you step by step how to turn a full manual client onboarding process into a fully automated one. I have automated a lot of onboarding process in the last five years for my clients, and I haven't yet seen a single onboarding process that cannot be automated. But first, why do we want to focus on onboarding? Because think about it, whenever you are selling a high ticket service, the first thing that you have to do as a service provider is to reduce the buyer's remorse. You want to make sure that your client thinks that he's done the right choice. And how do we do it? By showing them that we have a process and by communicating with them as soon as they pay. And the only way to do that is by automating it. Because I have seen a lot of examples in which this process is not automated, that whenever the client pays, maybe he's paying from a different time zone and you're asleep. So the client will have to wait until you wake up so you can get back to him. Maybe this will take eight hours and maybe he's paid you $5,000. How do you think that he is feeling? Did this guy rip me off? So the thing here is that we don't want to be the bottleneck of the whole onboarding process because a clunky onboarding process means confused clients, wasted team time, a bad first impression and lower chances of retainers. So let's first review what our onboarding process is going to have. This is the typical onboarding process for service-based businesses. After the client says that he wants to move ahead with the project, we send a contract over here. Once the contract has been sent, the client signs it and then we send them the payment link. Once the client pays, the onboarding sequence is triggered. An email is sent to the client, a Slack channel is created, a Google Drive folder is created, a welcome message in Slack is sent and the client project inside of Notion is created. So now let's say how we can create something similar to this step by step. So let's say that this is our client CRM and we have different statuses. And inside of the record, we can have this button over here that says onboarding client. So now we are going to click this button or we can also place it over here by going to the three dots properties and show the button. We can click on it whenever we want to start onboarding. So in our case, if we go back to our diagram, this will be emailing the contract to the client. So this is what we wanna do. As you can see, it is very useful that before building anything, we have built this diagram so we can follow it as we build things. Okay, so now we're gonna email the contract. For that, I am going to use two tools. One, it is eSignatures. This is the app that I'm gonna use to send the contracts. And the other one is make.com. This is gonna be the automation tool that is going to trigger the contract sending. So let's start creating the automation. Let's create a new scenario. And the trigger is going to be a webhook. Custom webhook, create a webhook, send contract or webhook. And this is going to give us a URL. We are gonna copy this address to our clipboard. And now what is going to happen is that inside of Notion, this button is going to send the information of this client or basically the email and the name to that webhook. So then that automation can send the data to eSignatures and create the contract. So let's edit the automation. And whenever the button is clicked, what we want is to send a webhook to this make URL. And what we want is to send the name and the email. Now here, bear in mind that we are always creating the same contract, but we can also make it a little bit more complicated and have different variables instead of the customer, such as price or scope or something like that. So we can also exchange those variables inside of the contract itself. So the contract is not always the same and is customized for each customer. But in this case, I am going to always say the same contract. So let's save it. And now if I click on this button, this is going to receive the client information. So let's run the automation. I click here and here we can see the properties that I wanted to send. The name, Dylan Canosa LLC and the email. Okay, so now let's continue with the automation. Now let's use eSignatures and create a contract. In eSignatures, of course, you have to create a template so this is gonna be up to you. And once you have the contract template, they are going to appear here. And we will add a signer, the person that needs to sign, which is this name and the email comes from here. 
and save it. If you have variables inside of your contract, you will be able to see them over here. So for example, this contract has some variables. So in my case, I have the client name, so I can also use the client name. And this is going to swap this variable for the client name inside of the contract. Let's rename this automation, send contract. Let's save it and let's run it. Let's trigger it again. So this is gonna be triggered and the contract has been sent to this email. And here I have the contract. Okay, so now let's build the next step, which is client signs the contract and then receives an email with a payment link. So let's go back to make and let's build that. This is a new scenario, create a new scenario. And here the trigger is gonna be the client signs a contract, contract signed, create a webhook, save it. Okay. So now whenever this client signs a contract, I want him to receive an email. So I'm gonna use Gmail for that, send an email. Here, I'm gonna use email from the person that has signed the subject, next step, payment. Of course, you can use a better copy. And here you have to write the content of the email in HTML. I would use ChatGPT to write this, uh, this email. Hello name, break line, break line, break line. Here's your payment link. And here, stripe.com slash blah, 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 blah. Okay. So of course, yes, this email will be more beautiful, but yeah, this is just so you can understand the, the automation example. And now let's save it. So now whenever this contract is signed, this email is going to be sent. Let's save the scenario. Let's rename it because we have to be organized. Send payment email. Save it. Let's turn it on and let's try it. I'm just going to go and sign the contract and then we will see what happens with this automation. I'm going to sign blah, 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 sign and OK. This has been signed and the automation has triggered and this has sent an email. And here I have the email. Next step, payment, hello, blah, blah, blah. Here's your payment link. Okay, so now let's go back to our flow. We are here. They received the payment link by email. Now the next step is the client pays. And what happens is all of these. Probably I'm not going to create all of these. I will just create the onboarding email because then all of this is going to be different for every project. Some projects will need to create a Slack channel, some uh, Google Drive. So this is already quite custom, but for sure, we will always have the onboarding email and also changing the status inside of Notion and creating the client project. So let's start. Now the trigger is the client pays. So create a new scenario. And since we're going to be using Stripe for this, Stripe is going to be the trigger. We will add a payment webhook. And here what we want to listen to is the payment intents. Payment intent succeeded. Okay, let's save it. And we want to send another email. So this is the same as before. We will find the email of the person, which is the subject you're in. Next steps. Again, so this is going to be the copy of the onboarding email. Hello, name, break line, break line. Welcome, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here you will you will have your onboarding email. You can add an onboarding form. If you have it, uh, you can add a Slack channel. You can add like whatever you're gonna need for your onboarding. But the important thing here is that as soon as the client pays, they receive something with the next steps of things that they need to do. So in my case, for example, is I prompt them to add an, a special email account into their Notion workspace. So I can start checking their Notion setup and we can start working together. So this is going to be the onboarding email. And now all the things that we can do is to go to Notion because what I will want is that this record over here, instead of staying in the same status, moves to converted because this is where they should be after they pay. And for that, first we want to search objects. This is the database name and it's over here. And I want to first find who the client is and then I want to update that client. So the 
easiest and safest way to look for clients in databases is by using the email because people may misspell their name, but they may not misspell their email typically. So text equals their email. So this is going to find the person. And after we find the person, we're going to update that database item from the same database, leads and clients. The ID that I want to edit is the one that comes from the previous step. And what I want to edit is the status. I want to move it to converted. Then here you can also add when this was converted. So we can use now here. We don't need to include the time, general info. Yeah, we don't need to update anything else. This will be, I'm not going to do this in this automation, but this will be a good opportunity to also log the payment instead of your financial tracker instead of Notion and link that payment to the actual client record. So like this, you can also keep track of all the payments that every client has done, because let's say that this client is paying in three installments. So this way you will be able to calculate how many installments they have left to pay. So let's save it. And well, this automation is good to go. I'm not actually going to test it because this is practically the same of what we have built before. But the only thing left for me is to build a Notion automation. So what I will want is that whenever the lead is converted, a new client project is created. So instead of this setup, I have two different databases, one with the leads and clients and another one with the client projects. I do it this way separately because one client may have more than one client project. So like this, we can do it. So I'm going to go to leads and clients and create a new automation. Whenever the status is converted, I want to add a page to client projects. New project, for example, is going to be called and the status is going to be assigning team. Well, this is completely up to you. And the client is the most important thing is the trigger page. So this is going to link this new project to the actual client and enable. So whenever that automation is going to run, this is going to move over here according to the filter. I'm not showing all the converted clients because they get into this new view. And as you can see, the client project has already created and we can see it over here. So now in my workflow, the first thing that I do is to assign who the project lead is, which is the this position, and then I will move it to the next status. It is true that you can also create this project instead of in Notion, you can also create it inside of Make. So you will add another module that creates that new project and links it to the client. It will be exactly the same. I just typically prefer to build the automations that I can build in Notion inside of Notion because it's just much easier and faster. So if we go back to our diagram, here is what we have done. We have emailed the contract to the client automatically just by clicking one button. Then the client receives an email with the contract, sees it, signs it. Whenever the signature has been received, he automatically receives an email with a payment link. Whenever the client pays, he automatically receives an email with all the onboarding materials that he needs. And we also update our internal system. We create the client project and we also may have created all the financial record for the payment linked to the actual client. So now feel free to modify this automation, adding the extra things that you do when you onboard clients. And if you want an expert like me or someone from my team to take a look at your operations and see where there is room for improvement, we are running free audits, but we have a limit of five every week. So you can book your operations audit down below and you will walk away with a roadmap to improve them. And well, that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.